Well, it's great to be here today. Uh, the subject of my conversation is about senior living buildings coming alive. And so what's so big about that? Well, it's big because it means that these senior living buildings can then become active caregivers for your residents and your patients. And this is important. We all know the shortage of caregivers, the extra cost of caregivers, and the impact of caregivers on health span. Let's talk just for a minute about health span versus lifespan. When the silent generation, the first people in the silent generation were born in 1925, the average lifetime span at that moment was 57 years old. 57 years old, and that was for women. 54 years old for men. By the time 1942 came around, the average lifetime was in the neighborhood of 62 years old. And they all actually lived into their 70s, but something really terrible happened. By the time that they were early 50s, their health began to decline. So their health span was not very long. Let's contrast that really quickly with the millennials. By the time the first millennial was born in 1977, the average lifespan had grown to 70 years old. And what happened during that period of time was something much more dramatic, though. The health span of those millennials, they will live into their 90s, but their health span increased by 25 years. 150% increase. Their quality of life will be good until their early 80s. Now, what's going on here? What's going on is that as you all are aging, for every year that you're aging now, your lifespan actually increases by nearly three months. So the impact of health span is going to be really important. Maybe it's the number one KPI that we should be looking for. So let's talk about this for a minute. What's going to enable these buildings, these inner buildings that have been sitting around just like dumb structures for a long time to become alive? There are four big megatrends going on that are going to cause this. First is mobile. You know, in 2014, for the first time in history, the number of mobile devices surpassed the population of the world, 7.4 billion. By 2020, just three years from today, there'll be 1.3 mobile devices for every one of us on the planet. The second is the explosion of artificial intelligence. In many respects, artificial intelligence is the biggest megatrend to hit the world since the advent of the computer. It's affecting every one of us, every one of our businesses, every one of our family members. And it's bringing about the third big megatrend, which is voice. You know, in the world, there is a large population that cannot read or write. But they are part of the digital revolution because they are on mobile devices, dictating their emails, and having emails read back to them. So just think about that for a minute. Someone who is illiterate is fully participating in this digital revolution. And the last, but not the least thing, of course, is Internet of Things. We all tend to think of Internet of Things as, okay, I can turn my lights on in my house from my iPhone, or I can change the temperature of my condominium down in Florida so it's cool when I walk in. But really, what's happening here is something different. The business use of the Internet of Things is growing. So these four megatrends coming together are what's going to enable our buildings to become actual caregivers. What's the formula? This is traditional innovation by recombination. Taking mobile plus artificial intelligence, voice, and the internet of things, and what do we get? We get smart buildings, really smart buildings. Let me give you an example. I don't remember the first time, I think it was in 1987, I ever walked into a senior living building and looked up and here was a big chandelier. 
in the lobby. I said, oh my God, what's that doing here? And very quickly, it became the chandelier effect. Everybody started putting up chandeliers everywhere. Uh, in fact, they were dumb chandeliers. So let's just take a moment and look at what a smart chandelier that is about to come to your facility looks like. First and foremost, this chandelier produces tuned LED lighting. Tuned LED lighting actually affects the mood of people with dementia, people with Alzheimer's. The chandelier senses who's walking into the room. It's tied to the electronic health record through AI, and it changes the light depending upon the time of day to help affect that person. The second thing that it has, it's loaded with air quality sensors. You know, it makes it easy for someone to change the temperature by saying it's too cold in here, and it warms up. But it does much, much more than that. It's looking at hydration. It's looking at infection control. It's tied to the HVAC system through an artificially intelligent module, and it adjusts all of this automatically. An 88-year-old person does not want to know how to use a sophisticated electronic control. And so, next, it's not powered by electric power. It's not powered by 110 volt or 220 volt. It's powered by a computer cord, power over ethernet. And what does this create? This creates in your facilities an industrial strength mesh network that allows you to bring all of your devices to interconnect it. And then last but not least, it acts as a very sophisticated smoke and fire protection device that also is tied with an AI interface to a much smarter fire and smoke system. This is the precursor to never again ever having a patient or a resident die in a senior living fire. And so this smart chandelier does a lot. Now, let me give you a second example. Smart floor tiles. This floor tile carries a film at the top that is, it is really blistocardiography so that it measures force, temperature, blood pressure, and it gives you these vital signs on a continuous readout. Right below there is an AI force cell transducer. What does that do? It's looking at gait. It's looking at fall prevention. It's looking at all of the things that as the patient is walking across the floor, it's passively monitoring all of this. Last but not least, we stole technology from the automobile racing business called the Safer Barrier. About 15 years ago, these Safer Barriers were invented to go on the wall of racetracks. So a car goes bang at 240 miles an hour into the wall. What happens? The driver gets out, walks away. You see it every weekend on NASCAR, IndyCar. How do these people survive these crashes? Because the safer barrier actually reduced fatalities of people hitting the walls, race car drivers, by 98%. So this smart floor tile is going to attack two of the biggest reasons we all send patients back to the hospital. What is it? Number one, vital signs monitoring on a continuous basis. I mean, you're just going to know when Mrs. Jones gets up and she's gained five pounds of weight that we've got a CHF problem. It's also going to be really, really important in falls. And we all know what falls mean to this industry. That safer barrier will act so that when Mrs. Jones falls, she doesn't break her hip, she doesn't break her pelvis, and the tile changes color, so we just simply replace the tile. All of you wear bicycle helmets. If you have an accident with your bicycle helmet on, boom, it's gone. It's a one-time use. That's the safer barrier technology that we think we can apply in the floors. If we attack these two things with one simple product, imagine what we could change in terms of the cost structure rehospitalization. It could be extremely dramatic. So we're looking at this holistically now. These buildings as caregivers 
are going to be enabled by these giant megatrends. And these megatrends are added up in recombination to produce this very, very smart building. The biggest challenge we're going to have in this industry over the next 20 years, we're not going to be able to get enough caregivers at the right price to do the jobs that we have to do. So we need something that's smarter, something that can care for our people 7 by 24, and that's going to be a smart building. So thank you very much for having me.